My phone is broken, and not only that, it's also a Pixel 4. My wrist is also naked, so I need a smartwatch, and lo and behold, Google is here with new Pixel 7 devices, the natural replacement for the 4 that is smashed, and they've got finally the Pixel Watch. We're not gonna look at this in this video, we'll have a dedicated video for it, so look out for that, but today I wanna look at the new phones, which I'm quite excited about. Then look, Google actually sent us a care package. Google Pixel Collection. They got the whole ecosystem now. They've got earbuds. They've got a watch. And they've got a phone. And they have those Nest thermostats and the cameras. Your whole life. Wow. And they actually have some harmony between the devices too. You can see on these Pixel Buds, this color I believe is what they call hazel. That's a color you're gonna see on these new devices. And in my opinion, that's a lot better than the uh, lemongrass on the earbuds. I like the lemongrass on this phone, but on the earbuds it kind of just looks like the color they'll be once the white yellows and looks like earwax. Anyways, enough about the buds. Let's get all these friends out of here for a moment and take a look at what's in the boxes if you buy a Pixel 7 or a 7 Pro. You can see it's a very slim box that tells you right away there's not going to be a wall ward in here for charging the phone. But these do use the same 30 watt charger that they've been using for generations. Here it is. The same visor camera bump thing they had from the 6. It's a design language that is polarizing. Some people don't like it, but I'll say this. When I went to the Google event the night before at the hotel, I was 20 feet away from somebody who was sitting at the bar talking to their phone, and I could tell that was a Pixel 6. This is the lemongrass color on the 7. This is the hazel color on the 7 Pro, and this is the snow white color on the 7 Pro. There's more colors too. There's a black you can get if you, if you have an uncompromising executive look in mind. Taking the devices out, you can see inside they do have the adapter for taking data off your phone and getting it onto your new phone, as well as a USB-C to C cable, and then some little Google Quick Start guides, and that is about it, just the basics. Taking a tour of the exterior, you can see they are very similar. However, there's a difference on the visor. On the previous six, this was glass, and so it was, it was black glass, and then when it came to the side, there was a little lip there. Now it's way more seamless. This is polished aluminum. You can see it curves right over and just melds right into the side bezel. It looks pretty nice. The difference from the Pro to the non-Pro is instead of it being polished aluminum, it's brushed. I don't, I don't even think it looks less premium, really. They do have the glass backs. I kind of hate glass backs. It seems like they're designed just to sell you a new phone once you break it or to sell you a case so you don't break it. They're worse in every way. They collect fingerprints, they feel hotter, they're slippery so it slips out of your pocket and breaks. Um, I really just wish phones didn't do that. But uh, you can get a skin for that, we'll talk about that later. Another thing we'll talk about later is the cameras. You can see, looking at the visors, this one has an extra hole. That's because on the Pro, there's a telephoto that's missing from here. More on that later. All the buttons are on one side. You got your volume rockers, and then your lock and unlock buttons. These do have face unlock like the Pixel 4 did, as well as an underscreen fingerprint reader. Once we get these booted up, we'll see how fast it is. On the other side, there's just a whole lot of nothing except an ANSIM tray. It does support eSIM, but you don't have to like you do with the uh, iPhone 14 in the US. And on the bottom, you can see the USB-C charging port, very quick, and stereo speakers. A great thing about this visor design though is that your phone doesn't rock on the diagonal plane at all. I mean, it could rock this way, but it's really just sitting on the table very solidly. It actually is oriented towards you, kind of presenting towards you a little bit, which is kind of nice. A lot better than having a bump that's just in the corner, so your phone's like dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Size-wise, the Pro is 6.7 inches. The non-Pro is 6.3, which is actually smaller than the uh, 6.4 inch on the non-Pro Pixel 6. That's the size, the, this, the size of the 7 Pro didn't change at all. It's a little bigger than the uh, non-pro. And size-wise, th they're pretty big. I really wish they had made a smaller phone like the Pixel 4 I just chucked. Hello? Look how tiny this guy is. It's not much smaller width-wise, but it is a little bit smaller height-wise. You might not think this is a great difference, but the height really is the dimension that kind of makes a phone smaller or not because you end up holding your phone like this and then having to reach to scroll stuff down from the top. And if your hands aren't big enough to do it, then you're gonna get your palm hitting the bottom and you're gonna get all sorts of weird interactions because now there's two points of contact on the screen. So I do a lot of one-handed typing. I do a lot of texting and driving, just joking. I like a small phone, especially like putting, once you have a case on the scenes, put it in your pocket, ugh, it's like this big brick. But I get it, Google. 
people like big screens, so why not put the biggest screen you can for the least money you can? I get it, but I know I'm not alone. We're talking eight and 12 gigabytes of RAM, and in terms of battery life, it's 5,000 milliamp hours typically on the Pro, which is very similar, actually a little tiny bit smaller than on the 6 Pro. Uh, but the difference is on the 6 Pro, they were saying if you put in extreme battery saver mode, you get 48 hours. Now they're saying 72 hours in that mode. The situation's kind of exacerbated on the non-Pro. Last time they had 46, 14 milliamp hours, and now it's 4,355 milliamp hours on the non-Pro. And still they're using the 30 watt fast charger, which will give you about 50% charge in about 30 minutes. Not as fast as some of the Chinese phones we see that are just pumping power into these things. Let's turn these puppies on and get to the good stuff. But first I'm gonna tell you about our sponsor. It's D Brand, and guess what? They made cases for these with a new pattern. There's three new patterns, Arctic Camo, Navy Camo, and Glitch Camo. Look how cyberpunk this keyboard is. It looks pretty cool. And they actually made them in their uh, big giant. Uh, oh, with two ways to open this. Uh, wow, that's advanced. See, this is the kind of thing I need to have on my Pixel 7 so that I don't have it get broken by children. Wow, that's easy to put on. Preserves the buttons. Be tactile. Cool look, and as I said, equalizes that visor so it's just flush. Now, there's no rocking in any direction. That's a brick. And you can see that the bezel is a little higher than the screen too to protect you just a bit from scratches when it's face down on a table or drops that are face down. These patterns are available now for literally every skin that D Brand provides. So you can get it on your AirPods, your Steam Deck, your laptop, whatever. And I'm not an investor in framework. Check out the link below and get yours today. Okay, I've got both the phones powered on now. And there's two things I can see immediately. One I could have noticed before is that uh, like the previous generation, the Pro has this curved glass thing going on. Whereas the non-Pro is more straight across. So the bezel is kind of just closer to the same plane as the front of the glass. And the next thing I'm noticing is that when I swipe down my notification tray, on this phone, the color scheme is all green, and on this one, it's all yellowy. And that is actually is because of the color of the phone that we got. So this is part of their Material U UI, where you can change the theme of the wallpaper and desktop and everything just to, to match the wallpaper that you choose, or the, the exterior of the phone, or even one of the photos that you take and set as your wallpaper. And that can also apply to the icons here. You can get these disc colors, so they're, they're just all kind of muted green, for example. All right, let's check out how snappy this fingerprint reader is. There it is. Uh, and then let's try the face unlock too. Oh, oh, it's a setting. So it says unlocked by the face. Now I got to swipe up. So that's a setting you can change where it just opens automatically. You don't have to do the second interaction. I don't know why anyone would have that turned on. I prefer to have it just unlock like it just did and then open. Hello, there it goes. The cameras on these are largely the same on the front and back, the rear and the selfie cam, although there are a couple differences that I will tell you about. But by and large, we're talking a 50 megapixel Octa PD quad Bayer wide camera, an aperture of uh, 1.85 and an 82 degree field of view. The ultra wide camera is 12 megapixels. There is a difference on the ultra wide in terms of their field of view. The non-pro is a field of view of 114 degrees while the pro has a field of view of 125.8. The Pro though has an extra 48 megapixel telephoto though, and that also determines which features you get because they're doing some software trickery on these phones where they take photos from your main and your telephoto and put them together to denoise and stuff like that. So you just can't do use some of those software features on the non-Pro. I like the hole punch. Look at, it's almost like dynamic islandy right now. You see it pulsing? I don't know why it's doing that. But uh, the hole punch front camera does not look bad. It's pretty damn discreet. So let's see what the difference in those wides are in terms of what you can see. So as you can see on these cameras, they start at 1x zoom, but you can actually go on, what is that? The Pro to a 0.6x zoom, and then on the non-Pro a 0.7x zoom. So as you can see on the Pro, I can see a lot more of the blue wall and a little more of the TV, so it is slightly wider. Another difference from the camera's capabilities is the amount of super res zoom you can do. You can do up to 30x zoom on the Pro, and it's only 8x zoom on the non-Pro. And one thing Google emphasized in their keynote this time is that you get lots of steps in the zooming. You don't just have to go through these discrete steps so much anymore. So they do give you these buttons for uh, one, two, and 5x zoom, but you also can just pinch. 
What's up, bro? Whoa. That's 28.6 times zoom. Or you can go back down to one. That's the difference, holy. One time zoom, 30 times zoom. Now let's see that on the non-pro. And eight times zoom. So if you like to get in close, I recommend getting the pro. Here's a new feature. I clicked on the motion button and it's telling me about action pan. It focuses on a moving subject and adds a creative blur to the background. Hold your camera still or follow the subject to get the motion effect. Brandon, you wanna try that while I roll in my chair? Oh, interesting, and they give you two options, kind of like they do with um, portrait mode, where, so there's a non-blurred version, and then there's the motion blurred version, which I, I guess is just all like AI introduced motion blur. It looks pretty whack on the arm, look at that. Now this is actually a good time to start talking about the new chip that's in these. It's the second generation Tensor chip, uh, which is Google's own silicon, they get fabbed for them, it's an ARM design. A lot of the functions that they had on the previous phone are just faster now. So night sight is not a new feature, but the amount of processing time is reduced using this new chip. And that actually makes you get a better photo because your subject doesn't need to stay so still for so long. It's not as long of an exposure. It's a less long exposure. There's less of a chance for people to move and for it to be blurry. There's also a lot of AI capabilities from this chip that trickle into other camera features like denoising. So they actually showed off in their keynote that you can take old photos that you took in the early 2000s and smooth them out. Uh, you can also make composites using both of the lenses at once to take photos that you snapped on this phone that ended up being blurry and make them less blurry, snap into focus. In terms of making the shots that you take clear, that happens when you're taking the shot, it's automatic. It'll take a shot with both the lenses, put them together to make a less blurry image. That's not a tool that you get to use. But for making an old photo better, that's something that you've got to get the old photo from a different device and then use the tool. When it comes to videos, you get 20x zoom on the Pro and only 7x zoom on the non-Pro. You can shoot 4K60 on either phone, but they have active video stabilization if you're shooting at 1080p. For video stabilization, there's a couple new modes. You can hit this little hand button on the side and basically tell it what kind of situation you're gonna be doing. I'm out of breath because I just ran around with active mode on one phone and standard mode on the other. So we can see how stable one was compared to the other. Hold on, are these gonna rotate? Yep, it's a lot more stable. I was running. Cinematic pan for smooth panning shots. This is kind of cheating because I'm on a chair. I'd be remiss if I didn't take a selfie and show you the amazing selfie camera capabilities here. Now, there's no autofocus. They're still just like fixed. Um, but let's check it out. It's pretty dang good. Look at those hairs. Look at that unibrow and those zits. Oh my goodness. Every pore. And I, I mentioned earlier that there's a wider field of view on the Pro, so I actually have the option of going from one to 0.7 and getting a wider selfie Shoop. compared to on this phone. Yeah, quite a bit wider. But people don't just buy and stay in the Pixel ecosystem because they love the cameras and the computational photography or the OS. They also do it because of the Google specific features like call screening and hold for me and other things that just make having a phone and not being spammed all the time better. So they are improving that a little bit. There is now an upgrade to the feature. They have a feature where when you're on hold and they're giving you a phone tree, press one for blah, press two for meh. They actually show it as an interface that you can touch on your screen. And the way that they've improved this now is you no longer have to wait for the robot voice to say all the options before you can select the options. The other thing is in the recording app, the app that will record audio and automatically transcribe it, they are now, finally, separating it out with different speakers. Probably not gonna work perfectly, but I'm happy about it. And, and of course, I need to go in and enter manually. The person two is named Brandon. It's just not gonna know that it's Brandon. Although Brandon, you do have a distinctive voice. I'll say that. Thank you. Another cool feature that they're rolling out is called AI Enhanced Voice. So if people call you and they're in a crappy situation with noise around them, the Tensor chip will use AI to, re to denoise the call to make their voice more clear for you. So let's test that out with our friend Nick Light who's standing beside a fan in another room. 
You sound really bad. <laughs> Let me see if AI can do anything to help enhance the way you sound. Let me switch phones. That's the default ringtone. Nick, is that you? Huh, you still, you sound differently bad. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Nick. So either AI enhanced voice isn't very good or maybe it's not rolled out yet. I need an update. We'll see. Pricing, just like last year. There's a $300 delta between the non-pro and the pro. It's 600 bucks and 900 bucks. No inflation, Hey! Storage options, 128 is the base on both of them. Both available for 256, but in the pro, you can go up to 512 gigabytes of storage. They're available now, and there might even be some bundle options if you also buy a Pixel Watch, which we're gonna be unboxing in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching Short Circuit, guys. If you liked this video, hit like and hit subscribe, and hit up the next video where I get to finally not have a nude wrist. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Would you like a portrait for portrait mode? The face of LMG. Thank you.